Hi, I'm Dr. Hart, and I have some additional information on hyperbaric oxygen and coronavirus pneumonia and respiratory failure. And I want to ask if it works. And if it does, how does it work? Well, it may work. We know that it worked in Spanish flu. It had a powerful effect back in 1918. And we know now out of China, there's an experience showing that it can help patients who are dying of respiratory failure from coronavirus. And why is it working? Because it appears to treat the underlying pathology in the lungs. Here's a normal chest x-ray. You can see the lungs on each side, nice and dark because of the air in it and the heart in the middle. If we take a piece of the lung, you can see and look at it under a microscope. Here's an airway and it eventually branches into this fine honeycomb of small air sacs. If we look even a little bit further under the microscope and amplify it, you see each of these is like a little balloon. And over the surface of each air sac is all blood vessels. You see the red, these are blood vessels that are passing over the surface. Here's a coronavirus patient over three days time and it shows that the airspace is gradually converted to almost all fluid. If you take a piece of that lung, here's what you see. That fine, thin structure of honeycomb is now very thick, and all the airspace is filled with debris and protein and fluid. If we take a cross-section of the airway, how does our lung oxygenate blood? It does it by Henry's Law. And so here's the gas in one of those air sacs. Here's the wall of the air sac, and the white area is that honeycomb area along with the blood vessel that's in the honeycomb tissue. And what happens is, as our venous blood returns from the body purple, it gives off the purple carbon dioxide and it takes up oxygen. So as it flows past the air sac, more and more oxygen comes in and eventually we have pink blood. Well, the problem in the lung though is we're limited by atmospheric pressure. So we're breathing air, 21% oxygen, and that pressure of oxygen can only be dissolved in the blood in a certain amount. If we give someone 100% oxygen, the pressure of oxygen in the lung goes up and we have more in the blood. But what happens in the coronavirus patients? There's all of this thick tissue and all of this fluid in the airways and the oxygen can't diffuse through it to get to the little blood vessels inside and hence the blood. So what do you do? We just extend Henry's Law. You go beyond atmospheric pressure by putting someone in a chamber and increasing the pressure. So here's a coronavirus patient on 100% O2. We can't get as much oxygen in the lungs and not as much in the blood. But when we increase it to 1.6 atmospheres, we've got a lot more pressure of oxygen in the lungs and more gets into the blood. And here is the Chinese data to prove that. This is the oxygen level in the blood each morning before they went into a treatment. And here it is right as they came out of the, treat, uh, the chamber after each treatment. So you see what happens. They go in with a low oxygen level, they come out with a high oxygen, but it drifts down over the following day and they end up with a new level, but it's higher than the day before. So you have a transient effect with improvement with the hyperbaric treatment, and we have a daily permanent one that gets the patient over the critical period of the illness. And here's the evidence for it with CT scan. This is one of the Chinese patients five days before the start of hyperbaric treatment and one day after just the third treatment. And you can see the fluid in the lungs here, the pneumonia, is gradually decreasing and converting to more normal lung tissue. And with that, the oxygen level goes up. How many treatments? It only took five. And interestingly, that's all they used in the, with the Spanish flu patients in 1918. So, is hyperbaric oxygen curative for coronavirus? Can't say that. We don't know that it has an antiviral effect, but it's powerfully anti-inflammatory, and it's the inflammatory reaction in the lungs that's the main problem in coronavirus. So while doctors will tell you we need more evidence before you can treat, I disagree. We have enough evidence now to start treating off-label while we do more studies.